Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So good to see 
all of you here on the second Sunday of Advent. We are delighted that you are here, whether you be a member of this church or whether you be a visitor with us today. We're glad that you have found your way to be among us. And thank you to our handbell players for some wonderful music there. Lots of uh, hard work went into making that happen. We're delighted to hear the sound of those bells in this season of the year. If you're a visitor with us today, I do want to say a word of special welcome to you. We do invite those seated toward the center aisle to begin to pass down your pew and back up again, the ritual of friendship pad. And we invite and encourage those who are visitors, if you have never taken the opportunity before, to give us some information about who you are and, uh, and how we can be uh, in touch with you by email, by street address, phone number, any of those resources of, of communication for us are helpful to know and we can be in touch with you in the days ahead but again we're glad that you're here that someone has perhaps invited you to be here or you have simply made your way here led by the spirit on this day we're glad that you are worshiping with us today a uh, couple of things just to lift up uh, related to the calendar and other events this wednesday night we will have an opportunity for you to have some fellowship and some good soup uh, soup lovingly prepared by uh, Kay Thomas, as I understand it, and we're going to have some stories. Uh, different members of the staff are going to read Christmas stories and invite you to come and to be a part of that. We're going to have uh, we're going to have fun doing that, just gathering for a nice time of fellowship and food on Wednesday night, 5:30 until 7 o'clock. A uh, couple of other things too. You'll you'll note in the uh, bulletin that there's information about a way that you can be a source of care. Uh, for uh, foster children here locally through our Georgetown Foster Parent Association. We have partnered with them and there are angels on the tree in the connecting area that we invite you to go and take a look. Go look at the tree if you haven't been down there. It is absolutely beautiful. Thank you to, to Jody and Ann for providing that for us. But it has been decorated with Christmas and also with angels. And we would encourage you to, to look over those angels and to take one off the tree, maybe take a couple off the tree, and to provide some gifts and, uh, and such for uh, local foster children through the Georgetown Foster Parent Association. So there's information about that. If you have questions, want more information, I know Jenny is happy to help you to answer any questions that you may have. Also, uh, our mission and, and outreach marketplace is set up on, at a table right back here behind the sanctuary each, uh, each Sunday morning, and that is an opportunity for you to make a gift to another one of our local outreach groups and to, uh, in the process, be able to, to, to get a card to send to someone that you love and care about, a, a nice way to uh, contribute and also celebrate the gift of the season as well. Poinsettia information is rather self-explanatory there in your bulletin. Most of you know the drill of, about that also. So uh, be aware that December the 15th is the deadline for poinsettias to be ordered. Uh, a couple of other things real quickly to touch upon. One is that this, um, this uh, afternoon at 2 o'clock, our Tidelands Hospice Foundation folks are hosting a service of remembrance meant for anyone in the community to attend. It will be at the Prince George Church uh, in downtown, 2 o'clock. And again, that is a fairly solemn service of remembering people who we have lost over this past year. So uh, our uh, local Tidelands Hospice Foundation is sponsoring that service. So I wanted to make you aware of that coming up. I realize that's an 11th hour word to you, but uh, this afternoon at 2 o'clock at St. At Prince George Church. Also, uh, a note of real sadness, and this is really to our church members, um, Dan Boyle, who is one of our trusted staff people, lost his son very unexpectedly last night in, uh, as I understand it, a motorcycle accident. I don't have details about how it happened, where it happened, when the service is going to be, any arrangements at all. We'll try to get those to you as we know more but uh, we had received that word late last night from Dan Boyle, who is a wonderful person and our uh, financial administrator here at the church. And so it was a, uh, I know he and his son are very, very close, and this will be a difficult loss for Dan. So please keep Dan and, your, and his family in your prayers on this day and going forward. And we'll try to get you more information when we know a little bit more uh, about how to communicate that to you. We don't have any details, as I said, at this time. Uh, are there other announcements that need to be made? At this time, I want to invite forward Mike and Beth Jordan for the lighting of the second Advent candle and also the lighting of the first since <laughs> my, I couldn't flick my bic. It didn't work, so... <laughs> So 
So thank you. Whatever we face in life, God's spirit of peace will dwell within us. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us from our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Aware of this, let us join together first in a time of unison, prayer of confession, followed by a moment of silent personal confession. Please join with me. God of the future. You are coming in power to bring all nations under your rule. We confess that we have not expected your kingdom, for we live casual lives, ignoring your promised judgment. We accept lies as truth, exploit neighbors, abuse the earth, and refuse your justice and peace. In your mercy, forgive us. Grant us wisdom to welcome your way and to seek things that will endure when Christ comes to judge the world.
Amen. Every valley is lifted up. Every mountain made low. Now the glory of the Lord is revealed, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. And now I'd like to invite the children who are with us this morning to join me over here near the Advent wreath, please. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm glad you found me. You found me all the way over here. And we are under the, um, the Advent wreath because we're going to talk about that a little bit this morning. So we are celebrating the second Sunday of Advent today. And Advent is that really special time right before Christmas. And a little bit earlier in the service, we saw Mr. Mike and Mrs. Beth lighting that second candle and also the first one. Do y'all remember what the first candle helped us to remember? Starts with letter H. Hope, yes. We, we remember hope when we light the first candle. Today, the second candle is all about peace. We're going to be talking about peace. So we have two candles glowing so beautifully up there. Now, Peace is a little tiny word, right? It's just a short word, but it can mean a whole, whole lot. And I was wondering, y'all, what does the word peace mean to you? It helps, to remind you to be quiet. helps us to remember to be quiet. What else? That's good. <laughs> what is it? Yeah, in nature. Yeah, nature can be really peaceful. Anything else that y'all think of when you hear peace? Like, do your parents ever say, we need some peace and quiet in this house? Do y'all get that? You do? Okay. Well, at our house, sometimes we say, let's be calm, let's be gentle with each other. So, exactly, we can do this peace sign. That reminds us, too. So, peace can mean quiet and still and calm, and it can also mean that everything is good, everything's going to be all right, no worries. You see my crumpled ball of paper right here, y'all? just a crumpled ball of paper. Sometimes peace can mean that, you know, when things are tangled up or they're crumpled like this paper or they're broken or they're messy, that things get smoothed out. Almost as good as knee, right? A little, little wrinkly, but it's all smoothed out now, right? So in our um, Bible stories for today, we're going to hear about a really special messenger from God, and his name was John the Baptist. And his message was, we need to get ready for Jesus. Jesus is coming. And to do that, to get ready, what we got to do is we got to make the crooked roads really straight. Ones that are rough, we got to smooth out. And if we have like holes or valleys, we fill them in with dirt. Or if there's a big old mountain or a hill, we flatten it out. And I don't know if y'all can believe this, but a long, long time ago in the place where Jesus lived, that's what they would do if a king or a queen or someone really special was coming through, they would actually fill in the holes and make roads smooth and take down hills so that nothing, nothing, nothing would get in the way of that really special person coming to be there. And you know what? That's kind of what we're doing together this morning in church in our own way. We are still getting our hearts ready for Jesus to arrive at Christmas, and we're getting ready by having peace in our hearts. And whenever we remember that um, Jesus is going to be the little baby in the manger at Christmas time, that's God's way of saying, I love you. I am with you. Everything is going to be all right. I bring you peace. And then God also wants us to be 
peaceful people too. So as we start this new week, what are some ways that we can be peaceful with each other? What if, oh, you, you got one? What? Be kind. Be kind. That's always a good peaceful thing. What if you're playing with a toy and brother or sister or your neighborhood friend wants it and you just started playing with it and it's your toy? How are we going to be peaceful? Ooh, share. Share. We didn't practice this, by the way. <laughs> you could share. What else? What can you do? What if? Being good and kind. What if um, somebody tries to pick a fight with you? What can you do? Get calm. Say, not today. Not today. We're not going to do that. And what about when it's time to go to bed and mommy and daddy are trying to get you ready to go to sleep and get your jammies on? How can you help be peaceful? Do what they say. Helping them, yeah, help, help them help you get to bed. So let's think about being peaceful, boys and girls, this week. As we think about peace, that means nice and calm, but also everything is going to be all right, and it's all smoothed out. So let's sing together about our Prince of Peace, Jesus, as our prayer today. We'll sing, Jesus Loves Me. Okay, Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. Amen. Now let's get ready to go to Children's Church. Go that way. morning. Let us pray. Holy God, our hope and strength by the power of your spirit, prepare the way in our hearts for the coming of your word so that we may see the glorious signs of your promise fulfilled through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first re scripture reading this morning comes from Malachi 3 verses 1 through 4. Let's listen for the word of the Lord. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
beautiful. Thank you. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Listen now to these words. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother ruler of the region of Ituria and Triconites, and and Lysianus ruler of Abilene, during the high priest of Annas and and Caiaphas, excuse me, the word of God, came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. Let's pray. Prepare me the way of the Lord. 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 And all of God's people said, Amen. <laughs> it's good to be here in this setting, in this leadership role with you this morning. Some of you may or may not be aware that this past week, I was at the Mayo Clinic in in Jacksonville, Florida. I went with the hope and much prayer of getting answers to the many concerns I've experienced since having COVID in January of this year. There has been much anxiety, worry, stress, unknowns, and a whole lot of fear. Knowing that I had given a gift to preach here in my church at GPC helped as I had significant time to think, ponder, pray, and listen to what God might have me share with you this morning. As this is a significantly busy time of year, Bruce was not able to join me. However, God put a very dear friend in my path, and all was well. In my reading this week, I was joyfully reminded of the wonderful book, Same Kind of Different as Me, written by Ron Hall and Denver Moore. Some of you may have seen the movie, and it's wonderful. However, it's one of the most beautiful books I've ever read. Moore's most quoted words are from his book, and when asked to share with others how to describe himself, Denver simply says, just tell him I'm a nobody that's trying to tell everybody about somebody that can save anybody. Let me share that again. Just tell him I'm a nobody that's trying to tell everybody about somebody that can save anybody. The beauty and similarities between Zechariah's son John and Denver Moore, the homeless of Fort Worth, Texas, help paint a beautiful biblical and modern day picture of wilderness. Allow me to share with you the character of Denver Moore. Denver lived a hard life. 
He grew up as a sharecropper, worked on a plantation, and lived most of his days in a small town in the south before he decided one night to jump the freight train and ended up in Fort Worth, Texas. He ended up in Fort Worth without a job, without a home, and without much hope. Now, Denver was a man of faith. And while many could make a strong theological argument against his own declaration that he was a nobody, is really not the point we want to address today. He felt like he was a nobody. He felt like he was a nobody. He internalized that status and he lived with that belief that sprung from his lived experience in this world. In the third chapter of Luke's Gospel, Luke sets the scene for us with all the powers that be by placing us in the historical context. He starts by naming the Emperor Tiberius, the ruler of Rome, who seems to be 15 years into his rule, so we know we're already entering a story that's underway. Then we have the classifications of governors and second-tier leaders of all the surrounding territories. And at this point, the socio-political map has been fully represented. But we mustn't forget the high priesthoods of Annas and Caiaphas, which adds a religious dimension to the already overcrowded list of rulers. In verse 2, the contrast that is made is really significant. We read that the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah in the wilderness. While those words tell us a lot, they are also underwhelming at the same time. For you see, this John had no title and had no territory. He is the son of a random priest who married a formerly barren wife, And John appears to be in the middle of a desolate setting. Here, he is a nobody who came from a no one in the midst of nowhere. And the fascinating thing is that the word of God came to him, came to John. Not to a ruler, not to a prince, not to anyone in the Roman Empire or its structure, that the world would have presumed to be in such a position to receive such a gift. The word came to John, a nobody who came from no one in the midst of nowhere. John preached that the first step on the journey toward freedom was a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. I wonder if this was the beginning of John knowing what his why could be. The why that brings us back to the heart of what we know, the heart of our truth in Christ Jesus. The why that gave John the responsibility of crying out in the wilderness the words from the prophet Isaiah. Preparing the Lord's path toward peace requires overturning the world as we know it. John quotes the prophet to describe the earth-shaking transformation that must take place. One of my favorite theologians, Frederick Beekner, says that though John's words can certainly be taken as a mere picture of road construction, they instead evoke richer associations. Valleys filled, mountains and hills humbled, everything crooked made straight and true. Preparing for God's arrival means rethinking systems and structures that we see as normal, but that God convicts as oppressive and crooked. It means letting God humble everything that is proud and self-satisfied in us. And it means letting God heal what is broken and beaten down so that we can learn and be reminded 
of our whys. W H Y. Paths that seem satisfactory to us are not good enough for God. And in following Beekner's lead, John tells us to let God's bulldozers reshape the world's social systems and the landscape of our own minds and hearts. Our ways are not God's way of the world. And it is in the knowledge of this that we learn to embrace the why, the W-H-Y of who we are, the why of what brings us back to our center, God's center, every time. If we don't know what brings us back to God, what brings us back to center, we struggle and will continue to struggle until we can embrace that lived experience that comes to us day in and day out. Know your why. Your center, my center, our center, God's center. In Christ, we cannot forget that it's God's ways that lead us to salvation. God's glory will be revealed in Christ Jesus, the judge who comes to save us. This is the good news that John proclaims, and it is good news not just for us, but for the whole world, that all flesh will see God's salvation. I can just picture the locals running out to ask John who he is and why he's come, And I think he'll just send them back with this simple message. Just tell them I'm a nobody that's trying to tell everybody about somebody that can save anybody. Friends, this is God's promise and our hope. It's part of my why. Is it part of yours? On the day of the Lord, God will make for all people a feast of rich foods and well-aged wines. The Lord will destroy the shroud that is cast over us. God will swallow up death forever and wipe away every tear. On that day, the people of God will say, This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in God's saving love. Brothers and sisters in Christ, this is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust him to share the feast that he has prepared.
with me as we affirm our faith with words from an Advent affirmation of faith as found in our bulletins. We believe that God has come to us, that God brought us into being, that this God gave us breath and purpose, that we have been blessed to be a blessing to others, that we have fallen short of this commandment, but that God has nevertheless loved us despite our brokenness. We believe that God is coming to us, that God is not happy to leave us alone, that this God will come to us as a particular human being, that God will be made known to us in flesh and bone like ours, that Mary will soon give birth and Joseph will soon clap his hands in joy, that Jesus Christ will be born and our salvation made complete. We believe that God will come to us, that God will have the final word, and that word will be good, that this God will give us the presence of the Spirit to continue our work, that we are called to be disciples to all the corners of the earth, that the day is coming when tears and pain will be no more, and all will gather at the table, sing an endless and perfect Alleluia. Please be seated. With you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. How can we thank you, O God, for sun and moon and stars, for breath and life and all things good, for your steadfast promise and your faithful love, for the day that is surely coming when all things will be made new. With saints, with angels, and with the whole creation, we join the ancient and eternal hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you thanks, holy God, for Jesus, who came to be your living word, to baptize us with spirit and fire, to feed the hungry, to humble the mighty, and to announce the good news of your coming realm. With thanksgiving, thanksgiving we remember how, when the hour had come, Jesus took his place at the table with the apostles. He said to them, I will not eat this Passover again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. With thanks and praise, we offer ourselves to you, sharing this holy meal, remembering Christ dying and rising, and praying, Come, Lord Jesus. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, this bread, this cup, these people, Christ, body, and blood, given in love for the world. Make us one in the Spirit, one in the church, and one with Christ our Lord. Make us gentle, joyful, thankful people, serving our neighbors, worshiping you alone. Keep us in the peace of Christ until you gather us at your table in glory. Even now, a voice is crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God the bread of heaven.
the cup of salvation. Let us pray. God of our hope, we give you thanks that you have given us this foretaste of the justice, righteousness, and peace of your promised new creation. Strengthen us with this heavenly food as we seek to serve your holy realm. Lead us to live in joyful expectation of the coming again in glory of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Gracious God, we are so thankful for the gifts that you have entrusted to us. Some of those gifts are of a material nature, and some are of a spiritual nature. But we are thankful for all of them, and we pray that you might empower us and inspire us to be your people in every walk of life, in every place that we go, that we might be instruments of your peace today and every day, as Jesus would have us to do, and as we pray in his holy and risen name. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace both now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>